November football is here, and among other things, that means it's a mad scramble in the Big Ten West Division. The Badgers opened up the month with a trip down to Bloomington, Indiana to take on the Indiana Hoosiers. We'll check out some of the highlights of the game. We'll also hear from Badger outside linebacker Daryl Peterson, as well as slot receiver Will Pauling, part of a group of guys who are pretty funny and enjoy time around each other and are pretty good football players as well. And we'll also have our weekly chat with head coach Luke Fickle. All coming up on this week's edition of the Badger Sports Report. Will Pauling will motion to the right, three receivers outside of the formation. Receiver wide left as well for the Badgers, 46 yard line where it's third down and eight. Block gets the snap, little heat up the middle, throw over the middle, that is caught by Bryce Green. He's loose, 40 to the 30, down the sideline, 20, 10, 5, touchdown Wisconsin. Lock to Bryce Green as the Badgers are on the board. Third and 10, Wisconsin at the Indiana 18 yard line. Jackson Aker is the running back. Locke takes a snap, pressure coming. Locke looking right, looking, sets, throws in zone, wide open, caught by CJ, or make that Will Pauling. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Will Pauling wide open as the Badgers are in for the second time and again are in position to pull within three. Third and seven now at the Badgers' 34-yard line, double wide to the right. And the Badgers bring in some pressure. Soresby up the middle, and he gets sacked at the 50 by Austin Brown. He and Hunter Waller were in hot pursuit of the quarterback. Brown got him. They'll mark at the 49 of Wisconsin. Everybody practices every day and works every week, and um, whoever's out there, it's their job to, to, to get the job done. Um, and so, I think we got to take a look inward at ourselves. Uh, you know, I know I do, and uh, I think we'll come back and we'll be better from this. I feel like the last, you know, three weeks we started slow, and then picked it up in the second half. I think we just got to find ways. You know, if it's scheme, making big plays, um, you know, turnovers, just emphasizing, you know, getting the ball for our offense, putting them in a good spot. It's, it's the game of football. It's the little things. Yeah. It, it's the details and. Um, we haven't been clean on, on the details for much of the year, and that's you know why we're standing in the position that we're at. We were talking all this all week about just November. You got to be playing your best ball, and uh, we, we have to finish strong. And uh, today, I feel like we just we didn't necessarily do that. We didn't have a great start, and uh, at the end of the day, if you don't come out and play your best ball, you're gonna you're gonna get beat. Doesn't matter who who's on the other sideline. Let's go, man! Hey, you double three, one, two, three. You yeah. The end of round, Chimere DK to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Wisconsin! Pass pops out of the air, it's picked off by Mama Jometa. He's gone, Braylon Allen all the way, touchdown Wisconsin! And it's picked off by Hunter Waller. There is a big, big win for the Wisconsin Badgers. The Badger Sports Report is presented by UW Health. UW Health Sports Medicine, treating the Badgers, treating you. And is brought to you by the Construction Business Group, Wisconsin operating engineers and respected contractors. BuildingWisconsinTogether.com. And by Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. I've always been a storyteller. I capture those beautiful moments, things other people miss. My health took an unexpected turn, but my care team put my needs in focus designing solutions to support my ambitions. Now that's just a footnote in my journey, a small part of a story that's still being written. UW Health, remarkable. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at High V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the High V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the High V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store wide every time you shop. 
and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for Hy-Vee Perks. It's free and easy. These are operating engineers. They operate top-of-the-line innovative machines and build stuff that matters. And operating engineers are well paid. They even get paid to train. As an apprentice, you can make $56,000 a year from day one during training. No school loans and no debt. When your training is complete, you'll have a stable career job that is high skill, high tech, and high pay. We need operating engineers right now. Your future can begin today. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. You never know how a season is going to unfold and who's going to be available week to week. That's how it works in football. That's how it works in sports. And certainly with the Badgers, uh, they've had to do some adjusting on the fly. Going into the season, Tim Mordecai, guys like Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi, and then you go back to the Ohio State game recently and it's a completely different look. Braden Locke obviously made his second start in that game against Ohio State, which makes us circle back to, you know, I think topics we had earlier in the year to bring in head coach Luke Fickle about some of these younger guys and how you're not allowed to be young for very long, right? They usually say toward the end of your freshman year, you're no longer a freshman, but maybe just young guy period. I don't know what the grace period is for, for your program, but I guess it's not very long right not now. Not long, not long. We try to say it after about five or six games. And, you know, they did change the rule in college football where, you know, young guys, freshmen can still redshirt and play in four uh, regular season games. Um, so I think that this that's a little bit different. I mean, there, there are going to be some opportunities for some of those guys that maybe haven't played that you expected down the down the road, maybe those last four or five games, um, there would be more opportunities based on, you know, health of, of some and, you know, some special team situation. But uh, there's a lot of other guys that just happen to be because of, you know, the situations we've been in this year that have had to maybe step up and have a much greater role and down the stretch are going to have a, even a greater role than, you know, than we probably ever anticipated. Braden Locke gets a lot of attention. Quarterbacks do. You get asked about him a lot. Maybe I'll get into – you know, guys like a Jackson Aker, you know, Cade Giacomelli Aker. got in there, got his first carry in the in the game recently against Ohio State. But with Jackson in particular, what have you seen there and how, how has he come along now as his role has increased? Well, the unique thing is, is when your role is the change-up guy, right? When your role is the three or the, the you know, the hybrid, or then all of a sudden your role changes to the two. And it's still, you know, uniquely different. When your role changes to the one, I think that there's a lot of things that, that are much different and so that's where he is growing that's where we're going to have to see as to how he can handle all those things because we love the ability we know he can handle the football we know he can catch the ball the things we need him to do now being in this role where all of a sudden you're the guy that's counted on you're the guy that we're going to have to you know to spare a little bit here and there uh, I just think that more than anything you could say you're an older guy you've played some football but You've never done it in that role. So that's where we've got to really see these guys continue to grow, whether they're freshmen or they're guys that have been in the program. But now they're thrust into this new role of being a legitimate starter and, and handling a load. Well, another guy who's getting a fair amount of work, or more than a fair amount of work here, is Tucker Ashcraft, a good-looking athlete out of Seattle, Washington. But even he said in talking with him that things that he's being asked to do here, it's different from high school. So even though the position might say tight end, <laughs> What he's being asked to do, he's got to grow into that, right? He does, and I, I don't know that in high school he was asked to block a 270-pound <laughs> defensive end or to get out there and you know run a route on a you know six foot three safety or um, you know th there's some different roles, and, and he obviously everybody understands that. But I just think in general um, the complexity that which we expect the tight ends to be able to play within the box on the line of scrimmage and flexed out make it difficult for anybody, let alone a true freshman. A guy who came in in the Illinois game uh, a few weeks ago, and I don't know if it, if it was written or talked about enough, at crunch time, linebacker Christian Allegro. I mean, just the nature of the game, how it was unfolding. You needed somebody with, with length in there, but it, and he got his hand on a ball, right? I mean, who knows what was going through his mind. It might have been going 100 miles an hour. But the young man came in there and, and helped you guys win the yeah, game. Yeah, I'm not sure he knew exactly what was going <laughs> on in some ways. We, he had never played that position in that spot, and we just were in a situation where you're right. We needed some length. We needed some, some speed, and we had to kind of, you know, kind of shift up some things right there at the very end. But he's a guy that's been on kickoff. He's a guy that's 
taken a ton of reps in practice and, and is right there at the edge of being a guy that we really count on. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough to not have to be thrust him in there. Just we've stayed decently healthy at the linebacker spot. Um, but he's one step away from being a guy that's, you know, in there on every single down. And uh, he's got a bright future. He's done a great job. It's that same thing. It's when you're a backup, you can kind of get used to that role. And then until you get actually thrust into those situations till you, you find out what you really got. You've talked from the beginning, even as the as guys are coming in here via the transfer portal, that you're still about developing players. And, you know, Tanner Mordecai obviously is a 60-year guy, but I'm thinking of guys like, you know, Quincy Burroughs. His career is just starting. C.J. Williams, in essence, it's just starting. He played last year, but it wasn't a ton. Where are those guys right now, Quincy and C.J. in particular, because they've got a lot of football ahead of them. They do. And, and, and down the stretch, we're going to need them a lot more. Um, they're guys that are continuing to develop. They're, they're workers. I don't know that there's that many guys that are different. Obviously, Chim had played a lot of football, um, regardless of what the system was. You know, Will Pauling, who has had his first two touchdowns in the last couple of games, like he had played last year, but he also was hurt, and he hadn't played in a role where he was actually the starter and the guy that was in there all the time. So I think it's unique for a lot of these guys regardless of a new system or whatever of just there's still younger guys in this game this game is such a developmental football game it's some people just think that well athletes can be athletes and they can run fast and they can go catch balls but there's so much more to it that uh, that has a lot of development in involved in it and those are two guys in particular with Quincy and CJ that uh, are doing it from a little bit of a different role meaning you know they're they're subbing in and out CJ playing a little bit more than Quincy will doing it from a starting role but there's an incredible amount of growth in all those guys. Very bright futures for all of these guys. We'll take a break. More to come as we continue with the Badger Sports Report. We believe in education. We believe in public schools. We believe in financial security for Wisconsin public school employees and their families. WEA Member Benefits, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. WEABenefits.com. My favorite breakfast is Odyssey yogurt. I asked mommy where it comes from and she took me to a dairy farm to learn all about milk and most importantly, cows. Wisconsin cows are definitely the happiest, which means they make the tastiest yogurt. My favorite is blueberry. What's your flavor? Support your local farmers. E-I-E-I -E -I Odyssey. I had big dreams, then I got sick. UW Health made it their mission to give me a fresh start and a new kidney. Now my dreams are infinite. UW Health, remarkable. And when he first got here, one of the initial messages that Coach Fickle had for his team is taking care of things in the fourth quarter, knowing that it's Big Ten football, it's college football, you get a lot of those so-called four-quarter games. And Recently, the Badgers had one of those again and on the road in, in the conference and they were able to pull one out coming from 14 back to beat the uh, Illinois Fighting Illini. The big factor in that is right here, outside linebacker Daryl Peterson. Yes, sir. You always wonder what guys have left in the tank. You had a lot, you right. the quarterback a couple yeah. of times. Take, take us through the, the mindset, how you guys felt. I mean, it's 21-7 going into the fourth yeah. quarter and you found a way. Yeah, I think coach kind of addressed it at the end of the game. You know, we didn't really, it didn't really seem like anybody was phased. I'm saying we were down at half, you know, going into the fourth, we were down 21-7, like you mentioned, and nobody, you couldn't feel any drop off. You know, we saw that energy on the sidelines that like we still believed we could win the game, and I feel like that belief is what you know paid off. I was talking to C.J. Getz recently, and, and your position coach Matt Mitchell, he 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 had praise for all of you guys amongst the outside linebackers because it's different, I mean, you know, with what you're doing structurally and yeah. the way you guys have all bought in. You, know, you take us through that, the adjustments that, that you've had to make knowing that what is being asked might be a little different now compared to the past. Yeah, it, um, it, it's, it's different for sure. You know, obviously we're running a similar scheme, but we're asked to do a lot more. You know what I'm saying? Um, different stances, different, you know, coverage responsibilities, you know, getting able to rush a lot more than normal. So, I mean, we've done a great job, I feel like, as a unit of just, you know, buying in, you know, like Coach, like Coach said. And I feel like we've done a great job of just having the mentality to um, get better every day and perfecting our crowd. And I feel like it's starting to pay off on Saturdays. It's a good room, isn't it? No, yeah. CJ and yeah. obviously all those other guys. Yeah, take, for take, sure. you know, take us into the room a little bit. What's, oh, yeah. What you like about you it? Know, you know, we got our old man in the room with CJ. Yeah, <laughs> he's kind of, you know, our dad, so, as some of us say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, 
we've, we've been together for a few years, so we're a tight-knit group. You know, everybody can hold each other accountable and kind of get on guys, and, you know, guys don't get down on each other or anything like that. So it's fun, it's competitive, and um, our accountability, I feel like, is through the roof, and, you know, we love each other a lot. We've, we've been talking here with some of your buddies on the team, if it's Ricardo Holman, Will Pauling, yeah. about, you know, who's the funniest guy, this, that, and the other. Yeah. But, it, you know, through all of that, it's just important because when you get into late October, into November, you know, the grind of the season, yeah. you've got to have a little fun too, right? right? Yeah. I mean, you get on the field, it's about work, but right. you're in the locker room or whatever, you gotta, you got to chop it up a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, and I feel like, you know, my friend group especially, we do a good job of that. You know what I'm saying? Even after, you know, the couple, you know, couple, you know losses that we took, you know, we made sure to kind of bring energy, make a couple guys smile, make coaches smile, make guys laugh and stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, um, my crew takes pride in that. <laughs> got to do that. Oh, gotta, yeah, for sure, that, no though. doubt. So I've been, again, been doing the tour because Rico Ricardo Holman is the funniest guy according to Ricardo Holman. I don't I don't think so. You got a rebuttal for that. Right. I, I feel like I'm the funniest guy because I can make everybody <laughs> laugh. No matter if you're having a good day, bad day, if you like me, if you don't like me, I will make you laugh at some point. I don't think Ricardo could do that. It's just me. <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing, wearing out the topic, but he's so much fun. Uh, I mean, yeah. as a mic'd up guy, have you been mic'd up yet? No, I haven't been. I don't know why. Hopefully soon. Yeah, you're going to need to. Oh, yeah. Right? Mine's going to be the funniest one. <laughs> when, when Coach Collins, Brady Collins came in, things changed up a little bit. You guys feel like you've got the got it in you to, to get your very best effort in the month of November? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I was telling you a few minutes ago, like, there's – you know, the way we're the way we're training, you know, it doesn't feel like we're in season, and I feel like it's starting to pay off in fourth quarters. And obviously, we run a, a tempo offense and stuff like that, so I feel like we're we're built for fourth quarters and overtime if it has to go, you know, to that length. You know what I'm saying? So our training, the way we're training, is prepared for that. And I feel like you know, as we get into November, you know, we'll be we'll be fresh in the fourth. That's always the, that's the month, right? Yes, I mean, you, you set everything up for November. Is, yeah. Does that help you get through the you know, the winter conditioning, summer conditioning? You know, it's it's a day to day process, a grind, but. In your mind, are you thinking about that last month of the regular season? Oh, yeah, you can't help but think about it. You know, um, and I, when we came back in the summer in, in June, you know, the back of our shirt said finish. You know, we're getting to that last third of the season, as coach is starting to mention. So I feel like we're, we're ready to, you know, hit our hit our last stride and, and most importantly finish. All right, the finishing kick for the Wisconsin Badgers coming up in the month of November. We'll take a break. More to come as we continue with the Badgers Sports Report. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Gruber Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at hy V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the hy V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just a price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the hy V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for hy V Perks. It's free and easy. WEA member benefits dedicated to helping Wisconsin public school employees become financially secure with programs designed for the education community. Proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics, weabenefits.com. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo turned some heads when he was talking with the media during training camp. He said outside of his own family, he's not sure he loves anything more than good slot receivers. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes as we visit with, oddly enough, slot receiver Will Pauling out of Chicago, one of the uh, transfers into the program from the University of Cincinnati. I'll get to the Coach Longo comment in a moment, but I don't want to forget here. You know, we had Ricardo Holman on a couple weeks ago. Right. And, you know, funny guy, obviously having a really, really good year here so far this season. But he, he boldly makes the claim that he is the funniest guy on the team and suggests that who's ever the second funniest guy on the team is a distant second. He mentioned you being in that group, right. but I want to give you a chance for a rebuttal. What do you got on that? Uh, I will give Rico his props. Rico is definitely a funny guy. Uh, <laughs> and I feel like he's really good around kind of like cameras. Like you saw his mic'd up. His mic'd up was funny to everybody on the team. But I do feel like uh, I can give him a, I put up a good fight with him. I feel like I'm pretty funny too in a sense. But uh, no, that's like, that's one of my best friends on the team. Honestly, during the, uh, during the summer, we would like every every Friday or Sunday night, we would kind of like talk about who won the week in terms of who was being the funniest. 
And I feel like he won a lot of the, a lot of the matchups over the summer. But uh, yeah, Rico's a funny guy for sure. I keep hearing Daryl Peterson's a good part of this too. Like you guys got a pretty good core group of, you know, apparently musicians too. I understand it could be a band, whatever. But in terms of being uh, the comic relief, you, you, there's a few of you guys who kind of keep things nice and loose. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel like me, me, Rico, DP, and uh, Quincy Quincy Burrows, we're always always together. We're always laughing, having a good time. I feel like a lot of the guys kind of feel our energy wherever wherever we're at because we're always together. So I feel like uh, it's definitely a good group, group of guys and a, guy, a group of guys they like to joke around a lot. I want to circle back to what I started this with with uh, with Coach Longo, his his comments about <laughs> slot receivers, which I'm sure you heard. Yeah. Uh, when you first heard him say that, what were you thinking? Uh, I don't know. When I first heard him say it, I, was, I didn't really know what to think. Obviously, you think it's cool because it means like. All right, Coach Longo loves slots, okay, so he should be feed, feeding the boys a lot. So uh, that was kind of my initial thought, but then, uh, I don't know, kind of just seeing what he's been able to do in the past with receivers, specifically in the slot, uh, you look at it and it's kind of like, okay, yeah, you could definitely tell that Coach Longo thinks that slots are a big part of his offense. So uh, I kind of feel like that was cool to hear him say something like that. Getting that first touchdown catch, first of what we hope will be many for you in yes, your sir. time at Wisconsin. Take us through that play, because that's a heck of a play. I think that DB for Illinois thought he had a pick until you flew in front of him there. Yes, it, it was that entire day. Not even just that play was awesome for me. Uh, but pretty much we ran an out and up, essentially. We were hoping they play man coverage. It actually went to like a cover two invert almost. And the uh, safety kind of kind of fell off of Bryson Green's route and kind of worked towards me. And I, I'm not sure if Braden Locke saw it or not, but he put it up. And sure enough, I had to go up and make a play, and uh, I came down with it. That was such an important game, an important quarter, you hope, moving forward here with Schuyler making a, a catch. Yeah. A beautiful throw, but it was great concentration. Just Coach Fickle has talked all along, going back to winter, about winning in the fourth quarter. And to get a game like that, you, you hope that that could be kind of a breakthrough moment, right? Yeah, I feel like those, those are the type of the games, are the type of games where you really see what your team's made of. And uh, it really shows how, how hard we worked over the offseason. Because we, Coach Fick, Coach Brady, all those guys, they put a big emphasis on kind of just finishing games, like you said, in the fourth quarter. I feel like we came out in the second half and more specifically in that fourth quarter and we showed uh, Illinois what we were about. Well, obviously in recent weeks, you have had a lot of targets. They, they've been, if it was Tanner before he, he got he got hurt in the Iowa game and I've Braden now. I definitely feel like I've gotten a little bit more comfort. I feel, still feel like I'm very far from where I could be. I Me mean, per, personally, that's how I feel. But uh, yeah, just getting getting in with Tanner or Braden or whether, whoever's in, the corner, in that quarterback, just getting those reps with them, kind of having them see what I can do, know that they can trust me, that they'll know I'll be there when I need to be there, and uh, just kind of getting a feel for what I'm going to do on certain things. I feel like that's been a big part of the, the success. Re the receiving core, too, with, you know, obviously Bryson Green, C.J. Williams, Chim Ray, the, you know, the real veteran here. I mentioned Skyler. It's a, it's a group that you, just get, you get a sense watching. You're feeling better about yourselves as a room. I mean, it's a really talented room. But am I reading that right? You guys as a group thinking, okay, you got a lot of playmakers in this collection. No, yeah, we have, yeah, we have a, a great room from top to bottom, uh, and I feel like having the, having so much talent in that room, it, it makes it so much better for everybody in the room because we're all competing every day, and the comp like you said, competition breeds success essentially. And uh, when you get to compete with guys like Shim, Skyler, Bryson, CJ, all those guys in that room every day it's going to make you better at the end of the day and i feel like that's going to help us be a better team i mentioned at the top you're from chicago but you're a couple years at cincinnati uh coming here with quincy and obviously the head coach and some assistants did that help just some other guys coming up here because it's all it's all new when you first get here i'm, I'm sure everybody you know took you in but to be around some familiar faces from the jump how much did that help you no yeah it helps it helped me uh, a lot because uh, obviously you're coming into a new situation a lot of people transfer to places they've never been to people they've never met and in my in my case it really wasn't that situation I, I knew the head coach I knew what coach Fig was about I knew the strength staff I knew how hard they worked in the weight room me and coach Brown have have an amazing relationship so that made the, my my uh, transition that much more smooth kind of fun to know that they're counting on you as much as they are right oh yeah it, it's good it feels good you have to have a heck of a heck of a season here will Pauling young man out of Chicago Illinois stay tuned we'll take a break more to come as we continue with the Badger sports report I had big dreams then I got sick UW health made it their mission to give me a fresh start and a new kidney now my dreams are infinite uw health remarkable these are operating engineers they operate top of the line innovative machines and build stuff that matters and operating engineers are well paid they even get paid to train as an apprentice you can make fifty six thousand dollars a year from day one 
During training, no school loans and no debt. When your training is complete, you'll have a stable career job that is high skill, high tech, and high pay. We need operating engineers right now. Your future can begin today. After a serious accident, you'll need a team to fight for the results you deserve. We're here for you whenever you need us. Groover Law Offices, proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. The Badger Sports Report is presented by UW Health. UW Health Sports Medicine, treating the Badgers, treating you. And is brought to you by the Construction Business Group, Wisconsin operating engineers and respected contractors. BuildingWisconsinTogether.com and by Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics. One call, that's all. It's back home this Saturday for the Wisconsin Badgers, a date with the Northwestern Wildcats. One of the really good stories in the Big Ten this season, all that they've gone through, they have been a very competitive team. Kickoff at Camp Randall set for 2.30 Central Time. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation from Learfield. I've always been a storyteller. I capture those beautiful moments, things other people miss. My health took an unexpected turn, but my care team put my needs in focus, designing solutions to support my ambitions. Now that's just a footnote in my journey, a small part of a story that's still being written. UW Health, remarkable. We believe in education. We believe in public schools. At WEA Member Benefits, we believe in helping Wisconsin public school employees and their families achieve their financial goals by providing personal insurance, retirement and investment, and financial planning programs that are designed specifically for the education community. Proud partner of Wisconsin Athletics, weabenefits.com. My favorite breakfast is Odyssey yogurt. I asked mommy where it comes from and she took me to a dairy farm to learn all about milk and most importantly, cows. Wisconsin cows are definitely the happiest, which means they make the tastiest yogurt. My favorite is blueberry. What's your flavor? Support your local farmers. E-I-E-I -E -I Odyssey.